More breaking news to get to tonight, this time involving quarantine guidelines. According to the Associated Press, the CDC is now expected to shorten the recommended time that people should quarantine after being exposed to COVID-19. The new guidelines would advise people to isolate for 10 days or 7 days if they receive a negative test. That's down, of course, from the 14 days originally recommended by the CDC. Scientists have been studying the incubation period of the virus now for months. And now to a crucial decision and one of the biggest questions since the coronavirus pandemic began in the U.S., who should have access to the vaccine first? That's the question set today before a government advisory panel, and it comes as health officials reported nearly 37,000 coronavirus deaths in November. The U.S. reporting more than 270,000 deaths since the start of the pandemic and more than 13.6 million cases. For the third straight day, a record 96,000 Americans were hospitalized yesterday with the coronavirus. That's according to the COVID tracking project. But a vaccine is getting closer by the day. Executives of two drug-making companies, Pfizer and Moderna, are asking the FDA for emergency use authorization as the federal government and states make plans to roll out vaccines to hundreds of millions of Americans. And that process begins with today's meeting. News Nation anchor Nicole Burley joining us tonight with that side of the story. Oh, that's right, Marnie and Joe. It begins. After months of anticipation, we now have some idea of who may get priority for receiving the coronavirus vaccine. A little-known federal advisory committee has made its recommendations in a 13-to-1 vote, and if approved, they will become official CDC recommendations. A virtual meeting today of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, a group established by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This figure shows the proportion of COVID-19 associated hospitalized patients. This panel of experts recommends who to vaccinate and when. And today's meeting concerns the initial supply of COVID-19 vaccine, which is expected to be scarce, which is why healthcare workers and long-term care facility residents are officially being prioritized in what's being called phase 1A. Vaccinating healthcare personnel supports the principle of maximizing benefits and minimizing harms through what we are calling the multiplier effect. In other words, protection of healthcare personnel leads to preservation of healthcare capacity and better health outcomes for all. Panel members also say vaccinating healthcare workers has the potential to mitigate health inequities because the group includes a broad range of occupations, including racial and ethnic minorities, as well as low wage earners. As for the rationale on vaccinating long term care facility residents, Vaccinating long-term care residents maximizes benefits by directly preventing disease in a high-risk group and minimizes harms by potentially reducing the burden on hospitals. These two groups account for more than 20 million Americans. Later this month, the FDA will consider emergency use authorization for two vaccines by Pfizer and Moderna. Current estimates project no more than 20 million doses of each vaccine will be available by the end of the year, and each vaccine requires two doses. We expect a constrained supply environment for some months and need to make the best use of available vaccine. We anticipate 5 to 10 million doses per week post authorization, which could lead to a need for sub prioritization of the initial populations, at least for the first several weeks. Now, uh, that meeting was virtual. That's why you weren't seeing any video of those physicians. We're only hearing the audio there. The advisory group will eventually make recommendations for the next phase of vaccine rollout. Today's lone vote against those recommendations was from a doctor who said she's worried the vaccine has not been studied in long-term care facility residents.